so we back with more Monster Hunter Wilds day three, which is the last day of the demo showcase. And I heard there were interesting things to see. There are two hunts, just as usual, just like how it was in my previous reaction. There are gonna be two hunts that they're gonna be showcasing. But this one will be a co-op hunt, and then the other hunt will be a normal hunt, but they'll be talking about different stuff. So I'm just excited to look into it. Now there was a day two live stream, but I don't think there was as like relative or crazy information or new information to really seek out to compared to day three. So I might as well just react to that because if I react to everything, we're just, we're just going to be here all day. I mean, I don't mind that, but I don't know if you guys would mind that because uh, I'm not trying to spam you guys with Monster Hunter content, but I just want to let you guys know that this game will be covered on my channel once it drops. But let's hop into it co-op. So we got the four player co-op and honestly we get lots of new information over the last three days yeah they gave us a lot of information so apparently also i was watching a live stream with ruricon eric's gaming um and also uh jono they're all together but it was on an eric's gaming live stream apparently in the settings i mean capcom hasn't talked about it yet or anything because when they were looking through the settings someone caught um someone was able to catch it and and see that there's a blood setting on so that'll be interesting how blood will will graphically work in this game because personally i haven't seen a monster hunter game that really shows blood i mean yes people say the ogs have blood but like that's like more of like a cartoonish blood this is more we're in the modern days now of Monster Hunter, so like I wonder how the blood will look like. If if it really will look gory or not, you know? Okay, so I skipped it to basically their last um, phase of the hunt. Uh, just to see like how the end screen will be, how the if the quest will just seamlessly resume and, and everything, because I was curious of that in my, my previous reaction. Because, like, I think everything is pretty standard on what you expect with multiplayer is that you, you have four hunters roaming around with all the monsters, but you still it still provides that good experience that you would have on single player. Just with you just have it with people. Well, let's see. Because, yeah, their, their hunt's about to end. And then they said they're about to, like, set up traps and stuff, like with uh, bomb barrels, so I want to see that. Oh, there we go. They're setting up bomb barrels. So you're able to place it and pick it up. We don't have to go close. Hey, here we go. Ready? Gone wrong. Sujibo is still trying to like throw his bomb barrel. Oh damn, he could it. <laughs> oh, he just eats it. There we go. They just they're just slaying the Doshaguma now. Ooh. Yeah, they messed him up. He's just right on top of the Doshaguma. But yeah, let's see how the quest ends. So like everyone's just able to just free roam together, right? <laughs> we had a few bits of trouble happen along the way, but we got there in the end, so that's all the cards. Well, teamwork makes the dream work, and you know, is he cooking? The journey is part of the ending. <laughs> He's literally cooking. The quest is about to end, so, like, well, what's gonna happen? Will it cancel out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It would cancel out in a way. Oh, Alma's sitting down as you're cooking too. Wait, so it, yeah, it just resumes. That's crazy. Yeah, like the quest just ends and then, yeah, like you're able to free roam together still. Dude, literally what they created is Monster Hunter Land for all the players now. You could just like, the whole map is just a theme park for all the hunters. God damn. That's what it really is. Like that. Absolutely. Yeah, look, it, they just they're just resuming everything. They got their rewards and then they're like, they're like all right, on to the next. And I guess whoever's the host of the the lobby, the server, 
they'll just initiate another quest by looking in the map and, and starting the investigation quest or yeah like wow oh yes cooking more cooking let's see it so mud shrimp and then honey and then fish so does it actually show like i mean we already know it kind of shows the ingredients right but like how are you gonna show the honey that's what i'm curious about because we saw the shrimp before oh wow they actually showed a fish as well oh god the textures oh yeah wow it does show the honey what yeah it, bro that's amazing how this game shows all your ingredients now dude props on the team oh my god oh and then alma's eating what you cooked up too i see it this is an amazing game this is dude just saying this like wow they put every detail in every aspect that they have created for this game yeah, you don't need to go anywhere. You get these awards and then you're still on where you were. Then it's on to the next hunt. Yeah, just... That's crazy. That was a successful hunt in the end. We love to see it. So... I keep saying, like, a lot of stuff... I, I'm just speechless. Like, I keep repeating what I'm saying, but I'm just honestly speechless. Dude, props on the team. Like, I, I really hope this game has, like, great success coming their way. Especially, like, with all the coverage they've been doing. I, I really hope to see them succeed. So, you know, there might be important information, but I'm just going to skim through uh, to the next hunt. So if there was anything, by the way, like if, if I miss any big information that was put out for day two and then also what I'm about to like skip, let me know in the comment section down below. But I also want to hear your guys' opinions about this so far with all the coverage we've been having because I'm really, really impressed despite the stream quality and all that and me just wanting to play the game at least the demo man i i am so excited for this game and then we're starting we're starting off like something new so they're showcasing the item box over here yeah it looks it looks more cleaner and more simple to look at compared to world and um sunbreak since they made it more wider oh is it gonna be rocking dual blades oh wow oh yeah we haven't seen any dual blades gameplay I did show you that before, so and charge blade or switch axe any any of the two would be great takuda yeah he, he's thinking what to showcase let him cook switch axe all right dual blades and switch axe let's get it i'm excited to see what he's got to cook up intensely stressed about it say having two out in the field with you and then with the seamless camping kit straight back to camp change up your weapons and head back out again sorry there, I, i'm not gonna rewind there's like a bunch of utility items that were like infinite ammo or whatever Dude, look at the parkour this um, show floor demo version it's already put us right onto an alpha toshagama quest but as i said before let's manually change the monster that we're going to pin and make our target here and go for a balahara sounds like a plan and also i see um okay showcase to the map again uh, got the switch axe as your secondary weapon see look you get to have like all these shiny oh my god i like how they actually show the rewards so there's more incentive just to like even though you're not going for your current objective there's more incentive just to like try to hunt the other enemies and let you know if you could take them on or not with the strength level this reminds me of the anomaly uh level scaling that they did in sunbreak where they showcase like how difficult potentially the monster will be and even though it's on a certain rank but this is cool this is like more of a refined version it's like okay here are the rewards and stuff and it's like if you just want to fight the enemy go to it go to it now so you get these rewards and they let you know like oh they have like gems or uh yeah are they called gems right they have all these hides here high rarity parts to uh, collect if you get the alpha doshaguma so go for it before uh they leave the area or whatever I like that. It's also like it just flows well for its gameplay since they're focusing on open world and they know that you're gonna be like roaming around the whole entire map. So it's like going back and forth already to base and then going back again on the map is just gonna be tedious. So like they understood that and they're like, let's just make everything seamless. So like dude, props on the team. Oh yeah, that's so cool too, like they mark 
they mark literally everything on the map so they they tell you where the stuff is located at that's really cool i honestly think i don't know if it'll be like this on the final product i hope hopefully they give you a chance to at least discover everything on the map first and then they start marketing marking it on your map and lead you to it just like how they're doing it uh with it right now because you like this is a hunting game in the end of the day and you want to have the player collect intel and know and be familiar with the map in some sort of way and i think this is a good passive way to collect intel and let the players like be conditioned and start memorizing the zones and get familiar with the map by doing this by collecting all the intel and then once that's done then they're able to you know go through their index and just search up whatever item on the map and then you could put like a a waypoint on it to to collect it you know I would love I would love that hopefully that's a thing the environment overview here and you can see not only which monsters are on the field and what conditions are going to be happening but as he's toggling the um, the timeline and mm. you see he's hitting left and right on the d-pad I didn't even notice that yeah 13 more wait they tell you the storm time it's also going to show him the show the different situations that are going to be happening at any given time see I'm I'm not tripping. That's crazy. So they have weather. There's weather intel as well. Oh my god. That's crazy. I'm not even tripping about when I first... I felt like some people thought I was crazy when I said this before. When I first reacted to the tra the, the first trailer, they were discussing about how the storm will work because I compared it to a BR. Um, because, you know, the storm involves, like, involves you rotating or adapting through the storm if you're stuck in it. And they also give you a lot of intel, you know, when it comes to what time the storm is coming, how you're going to, like, rotate or react as the storm is moving close to you. So, the fact that this game does pretty much the same concept in its own way for Monster Hunter. <laughs> like, dude. Wild to see, no pun intended. They give you time and weather intel. Yeah, there's a time. There's a timer on it on how long they'll be here. I think. See, 11 minutes left for the uh, Balahara. See, I'm glad I actually skimmed through this hunt instead of the co-op hunt. I mean, it was cool to see the co-op stuff, right? I like this stream because it's just more formatted. It's, great it's like less chaotic to look at as well. Because <laughs> I'm just trying to consume information. That's the purpose. Alright, let's see. Let's see how you're going to cook up with the dual blades. I, I, for, I totally forgot about the weapons. Was that a counter that we just saw? No, that's not. Screw slicer, what is that move? That's a new move. So demon mode and then one of the previous streams, but you can see I did a perfect evade just now, and that's put me into the more powered up demon mode and given me uh that red glow effect. Oh. Perfect if you so if you perfect dodge you get that attack or what? I'm gonna do my best not to rewind because we're gonna be here all day trying to dissect what's going on. Good mount. The mount seamless as well. You don't have to like really focus putting a lot of air combo damage. Oh, we had to dodge that. Oh, okay. It was trying to attack you while it's mounted. So typically, like in world, um, you would just have to like brace yourself or just move to an another area if a monster is trying to like get you off. But now it's literally trying to attack you. It was doing like a shooting out mud to you while you're on its back. Let's re actually rewind that. One of the previous streams, but you can see I did a perfect. See, it's a it was actually trying to take you out. Wait, but he didn't take damage. I didn't see him take damage unless he actually was able to dodge it perfectly. You did something similar, I think, but this is such a long monster. There are so many places like God damn, dude, the dual blades look sick in this game. Once you get used to keeping an eye on your stamina and not being knocked off, you can actually uh, attack it enough in different places to open up multiple wounds oh. at the same time, all in one, uh, all in one mind session. So there is a big benefit to um, staying longer on the monster to open up more wounds. Oh, so wait. Uh, yeah, I didn't hear that correctly. 
once you get used to keeping an eye on your stamina and not being knocked off, you can actually uh, attack it enough in different places to open up multiple wounds oh. at the same time, all in one. So you uh, you want to be mounted and and constantly be around the monster. So you get, oh wow, okay, that's actually new. That's a new layer of mechanics right there. I like that. Uh, all in one so you want to like go for the mounts. Not to get that stagger, but to like open up wounds as well. So there is a big benefit to um, staying longer. That's cool. On the That's cool. Then. I like that. Ooh, the attack on Titan! Oh, we didn't see like a. That was pretty sick, though. Situational. So if you're in focus mode, it'll really emphasize those wounds for you, so you know where you're attacking for. Um, but even when you're mining, oh, tails off. Those wounds will show up really clearly. That's the first time where I see an actual tail going off in, in these demo showcases. There we've managed to cut off the tail. See, I knew Tokuda. He he's gonna like be cooking up in these demos. He oh, he's been he's been really consistent. We've all done that, right? We've all left behind the tail and not carted. So, <sighs> so many times. You might notice that Alma actually sort of flag over the flag to that there was a tail over here. So she's giving you support right in the middle of the hunt. Oh, so the hand. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Cause like the um, yeah, since the handler with you. She'll be able to give you much more intel. Okay. I think this is appropriate when you have so much going on in the map. And also, like, just in the game overall. Because, again, this is a much more faster-paced game. And there's a lot happening all the time compared to the other previous Monster Hunter games. So, yeah. You know, I, I think that's fine. Uh, that's honestly fine. Especially, like, when you really get locked in and find these monsters. Like, the newcomers as well, whoever's going to be new playing Monster Hunter, they're going to be locked in on just trying to defeat the monster because they're going to have a hard time at first trying to fight it. Um, like, fight these monsters, at least in their first 20 hours or 10 hours of, uh, of their walkthrough. Their playthrough, I mean. So yeah, it will be nice to have that little assistance, just to let you know, like, hey, you have this and all that. It, it can become rewarding to lure right down into your target monster's area because you can expect to do a lot of damage like you did. You saw that? You saw how to, your heart? Because like, you look, your health is basically your heartbeat. Bro, you're like Spider-Man. It. It was flashing red when it did that big attack from Raidao. I don't know if I'm just tripping or maybe something else happened to the hunter. Or maybe because the hunter's about to die, I don't know. Like, because it was... Well, it was half health. Let's see. Bro, is the hunter's now fully become Spider-Man? I mean, we we saw him been swinging in, like, Rise and Sunbreak, but now they have actual, like, Spider-Man senses? They got Spidey senses now? Wow. Yeah, it indicates. Wow. Okay, so it indicates a big oh. attack. I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest, because it should be intuition already for veteran hunters uh, when you're playing the game. So, and I don't know if they'll give you the option to turn off or not. Probably not, because it seems like an actual mechanic in the game. But, lore wise. You know, lore-wise for the hunters, they seem very seasoned. They're like seasoned veterans out here. The fact that they have spi spidey senses. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that just yet. Because I have to understand like the whole game. I I'm not personally playing it. You might notice that sometimes you hear the Palico shouting something out and that the health case kind of quivers. Yeah, and the Palico is already yelling at you. And then you have your health gauge going crazy. Like, I don't think the health gauge has to go crazy. I personally feel like you like this game is about adapting and, and knowing how to approach and react um, in your environment and to these monsters. So it should be Hunter Intuition already at that point um, for people to play. Not just because, uh, not to like really cater to new players or, or baby them. Because like, just learn the game, you know, that's really it. That's how it was for me when I, me being stuck in low rank and high rank <laughs> when I first play World. Like, it's not that big of a deal, to be honest. Like, when it, you know, I feel like you don't have to 
put a lot of emphasis to it. So you might notice that sometimes you hear the I think this is a good accessibility feature though. Let's say um the person doesn't hear the audio at all. The these are good cues. Read reading the subtitles from your palico and also like seeing your your heartbeat. The palico shouting. But like when you fully have it something odd. When you're playing this like normally, I don't know how to feel about that. With an intense red effect. That's an indicator. Again, like I don't know, like would you guys I know Monster Hunter, it's not like the Souls community where they, well, not even the Souls community, like a lot of people in the Souls community are pretty chill as well, just like the Monster Hunter community. It's just that a lot of us, like, want people just to play good. Indication that the, you're about to receive attack, but if you don't get away from it or don't dodge, it's gonna wipe your HP out. I see. Yeah, so it's essentially a cart warning for you to make sure that you know that you're in trouble. Actually, I'm thinking about it. This, the thing is, I'm thinking about like all the tough times I'm having in Iceborne. There are moments where I'm so locked in, I don't even realize sometimes what the monster is doing. And, you know, yeah, it would be nice for a little warning. But I don't know. I'm still stuck on that. <laughs> Considering, because the thing is, I think this would be appropriate to have if if the game uh, is very fast paced. If the monsters are, are really fast paced on attacking you. <laughs> Oh, sorry, um, not car, but you will get um, knocked over. It's again. This is all low rank, so a lot of the monsters are basically tutorial monsters for you to fight. Ah, still a good time to move. So I would have to see, like you know, post wilds to see if the mechanic would actually be useful or not. But I don't know. I, I've been playing these games for years, and it wasn't like a big issue to me. And also, I know people have issues with mobility in the game and having mounts, but like, I have no issue. Oh, where's he going? There's a little cave in here? I never knew that. Oh. Yeah, but, uh, oh wow, we're getting, we're about to see the, the underground map. But yeah, like, I, I never had issues with mobility in Rise and Sunbreak. I loved it a lot, especially how they did their wire bugs. Uh, it's just that if you're gonna like amp up mobility, you got to do that for the monsters too, or like create move sets where a lot of monsters do the anti air, which Rise kind of did, and also what Sunbreak kind of did. But um, I still felt you had the, I don't know, maybe the hunter kind of had the upper strength on against the monsters. Is that the phrase upper strength? <laughs> Sorry, my, my brain right now. But you know what I'm saying, like, the Hunters had a better opportunity. Wait, hold up, let me pause. Yeah, the Hunters had, a, like, a better opportunity on openings and stuff with mobility in uh, Rise and Sunbreak. But they did prove that Sunbreak could be hard because with the post-game stuff, with all the tougher monsters that they put out, I was definitely having a hard time. Yeah, it's a really good match for the sacred mind as well because whenever it's um, whether you're using auto or manual, whenever you're traveling along on it, you can actually still use your hook slinger while you're riding along. So if you see one of these useful Spider Man stuff, going to restore your health, you can just reach out and grab it without even getting looks so nice underground. So keeping up the pace and uh, hopefully keeping up or getting away from Radar. <laughs> I think this is the first time we've shown this area actually. Oh wow. Yeah. This looks fantastic. Oh, we're literally underground. This might be where if anyone watched our stage stream that we had in the last hour or so, um Riozo actually ended up falling into a sand trap. Oh, so when you go through the sand trap you end up in a new area. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's that's expected as well, because like that similar thing happened with the Diablo sand pit. <laughs> so I guess this is something similar. Oh, nice! What a good shock trap. Not only was I able to use the hook slinger to uh, pull that. Uh, that was from the palico, huh? Part and damage him when he fell, but my palico had very usefully set up a trap underneath. So oh, yeah, yeah. The palico that did. Makes the dream work. Nice. Oh, 
What happened to him? Oh, okay. Oh, he shot a, oh, uh, a sonic slingshot. Dude, those knocks are gonna be so satisfying when you're doing your combos. I just can't wait to play the game. Oh, please just drop the demo, man. Capcom, you guys start inviting me. I've been covering your games forever as well. You know what's crazy too? Like I just thought about this. Like, we still got like... We haven't really heard about Resident Evil in a while. Oh, look at your health. Your health's like freaking out when you're on low health. Because after... After one more strong attack by Balahara, I think you're dead. You're Balahara's carded. Strongest attack but yeah, anyway, speaking of Capcom games, Balahara I'm really looking forward to like Resi more Resident Evil. Like they haven't really talked about any Resident Evil games as of now. I think it's been a quiet year for Resident Evil. Oh, there's the. Uh, how come they didn't show that move in the showcase? That's what I was wondering. Yeah, there's that move that I was I was talking about. Oh, what happened to it? What happened to it? Oh, it's slayed? Oh. I was like, it's not moving anymore. <laughs> The Palico actually did a kind of taunt action there, and you can see it sort of got the aggro onto it from the Balahara, yeah. giving the hunter a chance to attack. It's so intelligent that in this case, the Palico will understand, okay, the hunter hasn't really got any hits in in the last few moments, so I think I need to get the aggro on me and give them a chance to create an opening. Was that so really always... I felt like the AI was always been like that, right, with the Palico? In the previous games, at least with the previous Monster Hunter games? Are really a very smart hunting companion. Are there any other but if the AI is improved for the Palico here, thank you. The, ways that the, the solo hunts are going to be more fun. You in distinctive ways. Oh, there's like a whole new area. Yeah, so there's like more verticality in this map. Because in the previous um, video, what I reacted to, I said, yeah, the map isn't as detailed. Uh, and, but that's really because we're in a desert and we're just really out in the open as well. Um, but I don't know. It's also like they didn't really showcase like the other areas as well. They just been finding the open. But now that we're seeing more details of the map or like the other zones, like it's really nice to see that there's verticality, which I do like. That's what I really like about the ancient forest, even though it is a bit hard to navigate through that map. The ancient forest is one of the iconic maps for me. Because of how very detailed and how alive that um, that map is, I don't know. Just good memories because it's like one of the first big monster maps I, I went in. Also, I love the wild spire waste from world. Dive in. We could do this in world. As oh wait, can you actually control it? See, because in world you're able to dive in as well, but like you kind of just you auto swim to like the next uh, towards your path. To the next uh, or wherever, just to submerge back uh, onto land, to the uh, to go to the other side. But here it seems wow, you're actually swimming underwater. Yeah, so the Palico is able to do, you know, other support actions as well. You know, does the things like usual healing or setting out items to help you deal with um, flying monsters and that kind of thing. So. I didn't have any chance just now, but um, even when I'm traversing these um, short underwater sections, if there's anything I can gather down here, I can do that with my hook slinger as well. Let's take a look and see if we find something. Oh, if you have a net, can you just catch the fish like that now? Wait, so that's cool. That means, like, again, if there's a different map, that involves water? Bro, that's gonna be so cool to explore. Wait, combat? Underwater combat? Did he say that earlier? <laughs> Just to maybe throw a bit of a, you know, dampener on the chat excitement about underwater combat. It's not underwater combat. Oh. It's just a few 
<laughs> I even asked that. He already knew. He already knew. I mean, to be honest, like I'm not a big fan of underwater combat. Like a lot of games when they when they do do that, like I don't know. I it's just I feel like there hasn't been a developer that has done other underwater combat right. So good call because I don't I honestly don't I don't want to deal with that. Despite I know probably some people want it back for the OG from the OG days. <laughs> But it's cool that you're able to explore underwater, so there's even more layers to just collect things and, and see underwater now. That's... I'm telling you what I said before, like, each mechanic and system that they have and what they created, they kind of went more... A, a bit more beyond than what we expect. So that's what I really like about this game. Because, honestly, they could just make... A world part two and make it a bit more have things a bit different and i i would have been satisfied already but like this is a completely different game compared to world and rise <laughs> it's good like that's what I, I i've been liking from capcom these past years already they try to be different and i like that Oh, wait, 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 you're able to make a camp? Wait, what? I wasn't... I didn't even pay attention to that. Is this a static location where you automatically make a camp here? Or you could... You could just manually put a camp here. It didn't really notify him either. How did he initiate it? They didn't even let you know, like, if this was a, a place to put in a camp. So you're actually able to put in different camps? Like, in actual locations, you, you, you could put, like, like, you could put the camps wherever you want? What? <laughs> I'm trying to look, I'm trying to look. I can't see his, oh, camping kit. It looks like he was using his camping kit. You could barely see it. Um, it's being covered by the UI of YouTube, but there's a thing that says camping kit kit and the webcam is uh is covering it so we can't see the utility he's using but it seems that you could just use it, the camping kit wherever you want as long as there's enough space for the camp so you can actually put the camp wherever <laughs> you really wanted that much huh? <laughs> yeah and then yeah camp slots left so they give you a certain amount to put wow okay and then they let you know the safety level of the area let's go okay and they said that the camp gets destroyed. So if I assume that if you put it somewhat in a somewhat of a hot zone in a hot spot, then yeah, your your camp is just gonna be jumped. It'll be destroyed and demolished by the monsters around you, I guess. It's never bad to stuck up on resources. So these are not like static areas that the game tells you to like set up. This is just based off you and what you pick and then they treat your camps just like as um, on the map as as what we've been dealing with in the previous games when it comes to fast traveling. Dude, dude, thank God there's more clarification on how the camps are set up. I thought they were always static and how the game just lets you know like, hey, build your camp here. Nah, you pick it. So that's, that's actually very useful on people who speed run the game or people who like to get through things quickly. Especially if they know how the map is and, and know how monsters like rotate around the zones. They'll know they'll know where to place their camps. See that like this game is even more tactical. There's a special palico there who's in charge of the actual pop-up camp building. And they're the ones you see in the animation when you create it. Even if the pop-up camp gets destroyed by a monster, if you um, have a chat with him, he'll be able to try and help you repair it. That's very kind of them. Wait, so other wild palicos will help you build it, or or your own palico? I didn't hear that. Special palico there who's in charge of the actual pop-up camp building. Oh. And they're the ones you see in the animation when you create it. Even if the pop-up oh. camp gets destroyed by a monster, if you um, have a chat with him, he'll be able to try and help you repair it. That's oh, okay. very kind of them. But, like, they just show up? Like, or do they just roam around your camp, or you have to let them know uh, from the base? How's that work? So while this applies to the full game rather than the show floor demo we're playing, you do have some detailed options for the support characters. 
for instance, if you would rather have you, one AI support hunter, and both of your palicos as a kind of a two-person, two-cat <laughs> hunting party, you can set those details up by talking to Alma and fixing your settings. Wait, this is a whole new zone. You can also, you know, make it so that you don't want any human hunters to join whenever you call them as a whistler. If you're, uh, you know, a, so a, chill. a solo hunter, then those are options. So, they're bringing back... Wait, you could actually team up? You could have... Palicos, just like how they did with a uh, Sunbreak. Like you could actually team up instead of like actually using the support hunters, you use Palicos instead. You do have some deep two person two cat hunting party. You can set those details up by talking to Alma and Oh, nice. It's like crystallized. I didn't realize that. Ray that was crystallized. Surprise dude. <laughs> That's great oh, he's using hunting hunting horn. Is that a saxophone? What support they want and who they want that support to be. It's a saxophone. I didn't realize that earlier when they were using the hunting horn. We've not seen this area before, right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, you're right. Nice, with the trap. Dang, he can't get it. No, that means... Oh, man, it still operates like the clutch claw. No... No, I was so happy when I was watching the previous trailers where, because like from a distance, like it seems reasonable to like reach that far. I mean, yes, it's you still reach far compared to Clutch Claw, but like what was annoying when using the Clutch Claw, um, when you're just trying to grapple onto something is that like it seems that you can reach, but no, it, like because the Clutch Claw has a range of like a like it has a range of a shotgun but it has less range has less range than a shotgun actually and just seeing this this is the same problems how it is with the clutch claw man <laughs> at least he got it because he kept he kept trying to cling on to it that's gonna be a, like that's gonna be another problem i'm gonna be dealing with it's a very problem world when I'm trying to grapple on the monster. Insulator pod. Wait, what? That's different. That is slinger out at um dissipate electricity from the area it lands, but I don't think you want to use it against uh, Ray Dao, right? Because it wouldn't be effective. He'll use it to his own advantage. So, uh, Ray Dao's a very powerful monster, but its nest actually has some special properties. I think you can see there's a kind of static charge here on the ground. Yeah. It's crystallized and has electricity on the floor. It looks dangerous to be here. You can see here that that actually provides a, like it makes it a safer area to stand. It, it won't let that area effect actually happen. Oh, big so attack. That pay attention to the environment and Dude, if Loki fights like Nergigante. Really that's the vibes I'm getting. Yeah, like, because it just drags itself. Like, that's what Nergigante does. <laughs> Dude, it's it's literally fighting like a like an elder dragon. I'm not gonna lie. But it's it's not an elder dragon. It's just a, this is a regular monster. It's just apparently the apex predator of this area. If you do a charge on the bow and you manage to do a sidestep at, again, at that perfect timing mechanic that we've added, it'll recover some stamina for you. So oh, he's I'm cooking. Try and demonstrate that to you, some recite. Oh, wow. So this, this is a tangible benefit to playing aggressive. Wait, barbecue uh, and barbecue <laughs> grill? Oh, is this the actual mini game of the barbecue? I, I thought they, like, took it out. It's reward. The That's nice. They still kept it. But it looks like we're going to eat now. <laughs> Oh, this is what they showed. This is what they showed in the trailer. That's right. So this is the mini game. Let's see it. Watch the color of the meat. Yeah, this is the this is the same. Um, from what we know of. But it looks like we're gonna eat now. <laughs> oh, you you slice on beat. Do you actually slice on beat? What? That was so nice. 
but it looks like we're gonna eat one. I want to see that again. Dude, it's so cool. <laughs> I love Monster Hunter food, you know. Yeah, cut along to the rhythm. That's what it says, bro. Monster Hunter is too is too go. They're too go on everything. They could they can make a whole cooking simulator at this point. Sorry, this is like the third time of me trying to watch it. It's just so cool. Perfect char! <laughs> I'm dead! Yeah, this is the most Capcom yeah, thing ever. You're able to do it 100%. Oh! So it's not just one multiple, and the more precise you are, the bigger the reward. Damn, it actually shows it actually shows your bite marks as well. Actually you like taking chunks of that barbecue off off the bone yeah, when you're yeah. eating it. You're it right Bro, they don't have to do all this, but they're doing it. So it's My god. And the more precise you are, the See? Reward. Look at that. Oh my god. そうなんですよ。あの、こんがり肉が焼けた後で、お肉が焼けた後に、この切り方に成功するかしないかで数が変わる。いや、で、ナンバーユゲットイートチェンジズアンカーセクセスフルユーマニスト<笑><笑> で、食ってこれ、でてんさいちょっとなるわい。うん。実はですね、あの、想定していって、あ、肉を焼いた後に言ってくれる条件があります。There's <笑> Mm. Yeah, I'd like to leave it up to Bro, there's more just cuz there's just more layers in into cooking, I guess. Okay. Why not, right? I thought it was just perfect timing because that's how it always was, but yeah, apparently there's more if you want to have additional dialogue or better rewards of your cooking. Okay, they're showing Chata Cabra love. I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat about the new improved 3D map. You may notice there's two different modes. If I just briefly tap the touchpad, it's going to come up in an overlay that lets me continue to move. Wait, that's crazy. Wait, Togura's reading chat? <laughs> Togura's actually reading chat? This fool... Bro, they're making game developers legit streamers just like how um Yoshi P is with FF14. Bro, they're just gonna be streamers like after their careers is like done with game development. That's so dope of them to do. I mean, it makes sense, right? They're just doing their job. They're just trying to showcase to the public well, and what the public wants to know. But like, you typically don't get this. You don't get this from a lot of uh, game devs. A lot of them are pretty, pretty private and, and stuff. Yeah, it seems that, like, we've seen a good chunk of the map. Definitely the forest biome that they showed, that's in a whole different map. It's not, like, sand and there's a forest, like the Wildspire Waste. It's it's going to be different. So there's going to be different maps for sure. We haven't seen the forest here at all. They There's just been different locations of, of the plains, the sandy areas, and the underground caverns. I think this wraps up the demo showcases for the Monster Hunter coverage. Thank you to the Capcom team, um, everyone involved in making this happen because it was so fun watching the coverage of this game and just talking about it and sitting down and, and watching it with you guys. So remember to drop a like and subscribe. Uh, there's still going to be more videos I'm going to be talking about and, and discussing. So my coverage is not necessarily over yet. And I hope you guys could tune in for that in the future. Um, also, I still have to put up my showcase video and reaction of all the weapons but we learned a lot from this stream itself there's a, there was a lot of information to consume and my apologies for those um for those who wanted to see like all the raw footage it's it's up on um, the monster channel in its live stream they label it a day one day two day three of gamescom so 
you could just see it on the live stream i'll try to put it in the description down below but thank you guys uh for watching it uh because uh it's or watching this with me because it's it's been a thrill just to watch monster hunter i love this game so much also yeah i did skim through some or i skipped some parts or segments just because like i just didn't think it was appropriate to watch because we're pretty much watching what we saw from day one so i just kind of skipped to the important parts or like cut out like certain things but the total hours of uh, or i mean the total um time that i, I record is it's been an hour so I sat here for an hour watching this and trying to get like the important points of the the live stream but thank you guys for watching peace off and happy hunting